I'm James O'Neill with O'Neill Ops, and today we're going to be taking a look at my 22250 match custom built by Chad Dixon at Long Rifles Inc. out of Sturgis, South Dakota. We've dubbed this weapon system the Coyote Rifle. <laughs> After a lot of videos and pictures that I've been posting up with this weapon platform, I've generated a lot of interest. A lot of people want to know more about the specs, everything from the barrel length to the stock to the action. So in this video, I'm going to be going into detail on each specific build component and why I decided to build this weapon how I did. First things first, let's take a look at this stock. A lot of you guys will recognize this as the Manners T5A. You know, I've had the opportunity to shoot a lot of thumbhole stocks ranging from the HS Precision Thumbhole to the Terry Cross KMW Sentinel. And I actually own a couple of those stocks as well. And they're, they're awesome stocks, don't get me wrong. But the reason I went with this particular stock is because of the ergonomic contour. You know, I wanted something that was gonna fit me perfect for, for killing dogs and this stock is the one and I actually own a few of these T5As but let's go into detail and I'll explain to you guys why I decided to choose this stock for this weapon. One, we've got the adjustable elevation, we've got the adjustable cheek piece and as many of you know when you're running a custom action or you've got a 20 MOA base you need to have adjustable elevation or an adjustable cheek piece so you can get a proper cheek weld and eye relief with your optic. I cut out the adjustable length of pull specifically because in my opinion, uh, the shorter, more compact weapons for coyote hunting it is a little easier to maneuver. If you've got a longer length of pull and you need to make a run and shot or you need to swing on a coyote, it's a lot harder as compared to having a nice snug up tight weapon where you can maneuver it a lot easier. Once again, that's just my opinion and my take on it. Let's go into more detail here. The thumb hole. There's a lot of guys that, that think this is a sales gimmick, but in my opinion, it's a huge benefit, and I'll explain to you why. You cannot uh, pick and choose what way a coyote's gonna come in. You have to be able to maneuver around that animal. That's just the, the game of predator hunting. And I found, in all the years that I've been doing it, a thumb hole is awesome. It's real comfortable, and it allows me to say we've got a coyote coming in from two o'clock here, but I'm aiming over here at 10 o'clock and I've got to move in real slow increments and get over there and, and, and get into position to kill that coyote. He's looking at me and every time he looks away, instead of having to get situated, I can just have a regular vertical grip on this thumb hole and move it in small increments, just, just as smooth as you can. As compared to a regular stock that's more of a horizontal grip, in my opinion, on shorter, heavier platforms, even longer, heavier platforms, it's a lot easier to have a natural grip, such as a vertical grip, to be able to maneuver your weapon, whether you're prone or seated. And that's, that is specifically why I go with a thumbhole stock. The action that I went with on this particular weapon is the Bighorn Arms TL2 short action. AJ Goddard is the owner and this guy is an awesome guy to deal with. I mean, you can get him on the phone and have a chat with him and, and he's just been a stand-up guy for me in working with him. Of course, his, his action comes with the 20 MOA base and I got an oversized bolt knob. I'd say this is somewhere in between the size of the Badger Ordnance Tactical Bolt Knob and the regular standard uh, Remington 700 Bolt Knob. I wanted something that wasn't too big but a little oversized so in cold weather uh, it allows you to snag that bolt a little bit easier. I, I wear gloves like this when I'm hunting regardless but when you freeze up and it gets a little bit colder, a coyote comes in, your adrenaline's going, it's easier to run that bolt 
with an oversized bolt knob. This action is his newer design. It does have the integral recoil lug, which is an awesome option on this, on this uh, new action. And if you look close, this bolt is fluted. I wanted to have a, a action that had a fluted bolt specifically because of the, the conditions we hunt in. As you guys can tell, it's really windy right now and we can't control the weather when we go out and hunt. And by having a fluted bolt, when you're hunting in high moisture conditions or real windy conditions, there's always, there's always dirt and debris floating around. And what happens is on those fluted bolts, a lot of that debris, a lot of that dirt, a lot of that sand will congregate down in those flutes and stay out of the way of the moving parts so you'll be able to cycle your action and, uh, and get a lot smoother run on it. Let's take a look at the bottom metal here first. AJ uh, recommends using surgeon bottom metal, so that's what I went with. Of course, we're running the AI mags, five round mags. And the reason for, for a magazine fed, external magazine fed platform is, truthfully, there's, there's very minute amount of times when you actually need to have a lot of extra mags on a bolt action platform when you're hunting predators but it's always better to be safe than sorry and that's why i run it i'll carry a couple extra mags in my stock pack it's always easier to drop a mag and put in another one as compared to opening up your bolt fumbling for rounds and stuffing them in an, in an internal magazine system i went with the jewel on this rifle and i've got it set to 2.75 pounds that might be a little light for some guys, but like I stated earlier, I always have the fingers cut off my gloves. This probably wouldn't be a real good setup if you are a shooter that uses fingered gloves to pull the trigger. It might be a little bit light, but I went with it because it's real comfortable for me. And if you look at the big picture, if you're trying to run a precision weapon, as precise as you can, it only makes sense to go with a custom trigger as compared to a factory trigger that's set at four or five pounds and it feels like you're, you're pulling the pin on a grenade to trip the, the firing pin. Taking a look at the bipods that we run, this is a Harris S bipod and we have the ADM, American Defense Manufacturing Quick Detach Throw Lever and for us, what we do is we can't always determine whether or not we're going to go prone or seated in a lot of the places where we call. So we'll just carry a couple bipods with the quick detach mount. All you do is release the throw lever and off comes our 25 inch Harris S. Put it back in the bag. And then we've got our six to nine for going prone and just throw the lever and there we go we've got our bipod for going prone a real quick and easy way to accommodate uh, your setup and get into position how you need to be set up this is a, a relatively new barrel manufacturing company that made this barrel this is a Mueller works barrel it's contoured in the M24 contour the twist rate is one and eight twist a lot of guys want to know why I cut it so short and why I got it got such a, a high twist rate and I'll explain that to you. The reason that I got it cut short is because this weapon system was always made to be run with a suppressor all the time. All of our weapon systems are run with suppressors. We use stock packs exclusively. If there, if, if there was no stock pack, we wouldn't be doing half the stuff that we were doing. Uh, we carry uh, all of our equipment in them, we carry our weapons in them, and in some of the cover that we hunt in, having a short platform like this equipped with the can is huge for some of the places we hunt and need to get into. I got a heavy barrel. I, I'm a big fan of the shorter, fatter, heavier, more rigid barrels. And let's go into the twist right now. I got a fast twist rate so I can run a plethora of different rounds. Right now I'm currently running the 50 grain VMAX at about 3,600 feet per second. But you know, I've taken this out to 800 yards and this summer I'm going to take it out to a thousand 
with this eight twist barrel, you know, it'll allow me to run 69 grain Sierra Match Kings and even heavier rounds if I want to. Thus the reason for the fast twist. A lot of guys will think of a coyote rifle as a high speed, high velocity cartridge. And I don't like to look at it that way. If, you know, if I can run this weapon a little bit slower and save my barrel life, you know, get an extra 500 rounds out of it, then, you know, I'll definitely go slower with it. Because in all honesty, if you know your weapon and you know the trajectory of your round, you don't need to have a max point blank range you know, out to 300 yards. On this weapon, I've got the NPR1 reticle, which is an MOA reticle, and I know my trajectory out to 400 yards using the 50 grain VMAX. So at 400 yards, I hold four minutes. At 300, I hold three. At 200, I'm dead nuts, and at 100, I'm dead nuts. So really, I can utilize my weapons, my optics reticle, all the way out to 400 yards basically about as fast as somebody with a max point blank range out to 300 yards. I hope you guys enjoyed this weapon review. We had an awesome year this year, killed a lot of dogs, got some awesome footage, and we're jacked for next year. We've got a lot of guys in the industry that are going to be working with us. We've got some new camel companies we're talking to. We've got some new weapon uh, manufacturers that we're going to be working with, and we're definitely going to be showing you guys some more equipment. Best way to keep updated is to add us on Facebook. We'll be throwing the videos up there first and uh, be sure to add us and subscribe to us on YouTube. Oniel opts out.